Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be going over an introduction to what a mole is. Uh, so make sure that you're following along with your notes and that if you have any questions, you make sure you ask me tomorrow. Alright, so something that we already have talked about at least a long time ago in Unit 1 was uh, what a mole is. And so remember, a mole is just an SI unit of measurement that tells you the amount of particles in a substance. So it tells you how much of something there is and uh, we talked a little bit about it because we did some calculations uh, using moles and we said that um, it is a standard unit of measurement but not one that you would have come across in your everyday life like you don't say hey I have 10 I would like 10 moles of this or 12 moles of that or I need a half a mole of sugar or something like that now the thing to realize is because there are so many particles in most most things um, it makes sense that if we were to use a mole as a standard unit of measurement, that it would represent a very large, large number. For example, your body is made up of approximately 7.5 times 10 to the 25th particles. That's a huge number. 10 to the 25th, that's, you know, 1 followed by 25 zeros. So you can tell these are huge quantities. The sun is made up of 2.0 times 10 to the 57 particles. So, you know, if we are to try to count these, it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult. And luckily, we have Marvin the Mole to kind of be our guide into the world of the mole. So what is a mole defined as? So mathematically, a mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now, put a star next to this, highlight it, you know, do something because this is probably the most important number in all of chemistry, okay? Everything's going to come back to this number in second semester. So make sure you know 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles is what a mole is. Now, what do we call that? That's called Avogadro's number, and it's named after Amadeo Avogadro. Uh, and this guy right here, is Amadeo Avogadro. He didn't calculate this amount, but he did predict that it existed, okay? So um, even though he technically didn't give us the number himself, his experiments helped lead us to this number, and since he was the first one to kind of predict that it existed, we name it after him, and that's Avogadro. So here's the most important part of what we're about to do. You need a calculator, you need your non-graphing scientific calculator, and you need to make sure that we know how to use it appropriately, okay? And so here are my tips for being able to convert between moles and other units and kind of making sure that we, you know, get the right answers for all of these types of problems. So the first thing is, underline what you want to know and what you are given. Just, that is a basic problem-solving technique. Next, create a conversion factor line box like this, okay? This is the conversion factor line box that we used when we were doing calculations in Unit 1, okay? So remember, whatever appears on the top here is what you are multiplying by. Whatever appears on the bottom, you are dividing by. So I'm going to be given something, okay? I'm going to be given a unit, let's say. And so when I do my conversion factor, I'm going to make sure that I divide by my given unit and I end up with the unit I want. Okay? And the reason why is, in case you forgot, we want our units to be able to cancel whenever we're doing conversion factor line box calculations. Okay? And so it's extremely important that we kind of follow those rules. And remember, you can string together multiple conversion line boxes like this one. So this is an example of a one-step process. The one down here is an example of a three-step process. So this would be like step one, this would be step two, this would be step three. But remember, you need your calculator for what we're about to do. All right, so we're going to use Avogadro's number to figure out these problems. So it says, see if you can figure out these problems. How many moles are there in the following? I have 5.1 times 10 to the 24th particles. Okay, and I have my nice little box and everything already set up for me. So what is Avogadro's number? It is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and that is how many are in one mole. So my conversion factor can be one of the following. 
1 mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. I'm just going to put part. Or it can be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles over 1 mole. Remember, conversion factors can be flipped around. So I can write it this way, or I can write it this way. So let's use either one of these to try to figure out the very first question. 5.1 times 10 to the 24th particles. All right, so am I going to use the uh, pink conversion factor that I circled, or am I going to use the blue one? So let's see. I want to get moles, so moles needs to be on top. Okay. What I'm given the unit as has to be on the bottom, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay, so in your calculator, try to plug that in. All right, I'm going to have to erase some of this just to give us a little bit of room here. But plug that in. So I have 5.1 times 10 to the 24th, and if you don't know how to use your calculator, now would be an opportunity to try to like test things out and see kind of how they work so that you can have specific questions to ask tomorrow. All right, so what do I end up getting? I get about 8.5 moles when I plug that into my calculator. All right, why moles? Particles cancel out, and I'm left with a unit that I want, moles. So again, 8.5 moles. Let's try the next one. 1 1.2 times 10 to the 23rd particles. All right, so I've got one mole again, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. My units are going to cancel out particles. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get 0 0.20 moles. OK? So that's how I would do the first two questions. Let's try the second two. How many particles are there in the following? So I'm going to do the opposite. Now I'm given moles, and I want particles. So since I am given moles, I put that on the bottom, one mole. On top, I put Avogadro's number, and that is in particles. Why did I do that? So that my moles cancel. And when I do that, I'm going to get a very large number. I get 2.2 times 10 to the 24th particles. All right, and I'm going to put a box around that, and that's what that answer would be. Let's try the next one 0.25 moles, so a fourth. All right, again, I put what I'm given on my unit that I'm given on the bottom and the unit that I want on top. And so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is Avogadro's number. That would be particles. Again, moles cancel. And when I plug that in my calculator, I get 1.5 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So that's how I would solve for moles or particles. Notice up here, I'm asking for how many moles there are. And notice down here, I'm asking for how many particles there are. So what's the big difference? The big difference is whether or not you're multiplying or you're dividing by Avogadro's number. If I'm trying to find how many moles there are, I divide by Avogadro's number. If I'm asking how many particles there are, I multiply by Avogadro's number. OK? And so again, test out your calculator and see what you need to put into it in order to get these answers. And if you're still having difficulty, make sure that you ask me tomorrow. Um, because we want to make sure that we get these correct and that we don't have any larger issues at hand. So last but not least, what types of particles are there out there? So here are the four major types of particles, OK? Because remember, Avogadro's number, we're counting tiny little things. We're counting tiny little particles. So what types of particles can we count? We can count atoms, which are individual elements, OK? We can count ions, which are groups of atoms with a charge to them, OK? We can count molecules, which are groups of atoms that are chemically bonded with covalent bonds. So yes, I still have to know the difference between covalent and ionic bonding. Or they could be formula units, which are groups of atoms that are chemically bonded by ionic bonds. So over here, I have a picture of an atom. Over here, I have three examples of molecules. So in case you forgot, I'll use blue here. Covalent bonds are bonds between non-metallic elements. 
So notice I have phosphorus and I have chlorine. I have hydrogen and I have oxygen. I have carbon and I have oxygen. Those are all non-metallic elements. Formula units, on the other hand, are groups of atoms that are bonded with ionic bonds. So I have a picture of that right here. Ionic bonds happen between metals and between nonmetals. And so in this picture, I have my metallic ion, which is, you know, sort of sodium. And then I have my non-metallic ion, which is chloride. All right? And so those are our four major types of particles. So test this out and see if you can identify which of the following are atoms, ions, formula units, or molecules. We're going to do the first line together and then uh, fill in the last line and we'll see whether or not you did those correctly tomorrow. All right, so I have nitrate, NO3 minus. That is an ion, okay? NaCl, that is a metal and a nonmetal. That is a formula unit. All right. Next up, I've got Pb. That is an atom. NO2, I have nitrogen. I have oxygen. That is a molecule. Next up, I have silver and I have phosphate. So I have a metal. I have our non-metal anion group. That is a formula unit. All right. So see if you can do this last line on your own. And that's it.